You're listening to the Hurdy Gurdy Travel Podcast. I'm your host, Justin Vakula, here to help you travel the world at next to no cost with credit card points, miles, benefits, and rewards. Make money, save money, and take advantage of great deals. Today, a YouTube video slash podcast episode. If you're listening to the podcast episode, you can hop over to my YouTube at Hurdy Gurdy Travel to see a video response here to The Ramsey Show, The Dave Ramsey Show. Dave Ramsey is one of the biggest critics of credit cards, telling people don't have any credit cards, don't have a credit score, cancel everything. He often misrepresents credit as going into debt, making the banks rich. You can't win. It's not worth the time, blah, blah, blah. So let's respond to it. I've heard many of Dave Ramsey's talking points in real life from people who don't want to sign up for credit cards. They're using cash. They're using debit. They're not getting anything back for their spending. They're not getting sign-up bonuses. They're not getting travel benefits. They're not getting cash back. They're getting nothing. And then they're finding themselves with issues when it comes to fraud, having to float the money from their debit cards. They're losing cash. They're throwing cash into a tip box for unknown reasons. Lots of issues can come with using cash and debit, and you're leaving tons of value on the table. Uh, Dave Ramsey is saying, oh, just go buy your own hotel, go buy your own flight. But I think that's really silly if I can just put my spend on credit cards, get multiple cards, get the rewards, pay off balances in full and not pay interest. If you can be responsible with use of credit, there's a world of rewards to earn, even at a low commitment level, even with very low effort. So let's respond to this Dave Ramsey video. How do I discuss wealth with Pro debt people. So he's calling us pro debt people. Uh, credit card users are pro debt people on Ramsey's view here. So right, right out of the gate, we have uh, some misrepresentations. As I'm not one advocating for debt, I'm saying let's just pay our balances in full, not go into debt, not pay interest, manage credit responsibly, embrace the frugal life, don't overspend keep it under control. So let's get into it here. Question comes from Jerry in Florida. Jerry writes, my wife and I are debt free besides our mortgage. And I'm having a tough time combating a family member who <laughs> happens to work in wealth management. Oh, geez. Okay. So right, he's like, oh, he works in wealth management. Oh, geez. So it's, it's a bad thing if someone works in wealth management. So people that don't necessarily know what to do with their finances, where to invest, and this wealth management advisor is saying, okay, hey, I've done the research. I'll help you with this. I'll tell you what accounts to open, where to put money in. Um, this, this isn't necessarily a bad thing. We, we haven't received information from this caller about why this wealth management advisor is doing something suspicious or the fees are high. Like, what's the deal? But right out of the gate, the Dave Ramsey show host here, uh, OGs in response to wealth management. This family member believes that using credit cards and paying them off is a great tool to build credit. Absolutely. Using credit cards and paying them off is a great tool to build credit. And not only to build credit, to accumulate rewards. I'm getting credit card rewards on my spend. I'm using multiple cards. I'm getting category bonuses depending on where I'm spending that I can get back 4.5% when I'm using my U.S. Bank Altitude Reserve card with mobile wallet or mobile pay using Samsung pay. I can use cards that are bonusing grocery spend 4% to 6%. I'm getting new cards and getting really high welcome offers with cash bonuses like $750, $500, just for shifting my spend to new cards. So it's a very easy proposition here if you could be disciplined about credit. You're building credit and you're earning rewards. This is making life better. And when I travel, I don't have to pay for flights and I don't have to pay for hotels because I'm using points, I'm using rewards, I'm using benefits. Whereas the Dave Ramsey fans, oh, I don't want to use credit. I'll just pay for my hotel. Okay, well, you're paying maybe like $150, $200 a night or less. Some people I chat with, they try to cut corners and they try to go to these like Red Roof Inn and all these random places and they complain about the poor accommodations. So it's, it's another interesting thing. But why pay $150, $200 for a night at a decent hotel when you could just use credit and earn rewards? Why pay? Dave Ramsey wants you to pay full price. I say use credit responsibly. If you can't use credit responsibly, you shouldn't play the game. But the problem with Dave Ramsey and his show hosts, they're making blanket statements saying all credit is bad. 
don't use credit cancel everything credits all fraud all fraud as uh, uh my friend cakeology or bobby bd b-e-d-i uh, might say in his youtube channel <laughs> but no it's it's real the banks are giving you these rewards to get your spend the banks want you to overspend and pay interest but it doesn't have to be that way they're making money on the merchant fees when you swipe your card the bank is making money but guess what? You're getting rewards too. But if you're using cash or debit, you're paying those transaction fees and getting nothing for it. So why not just use credit? Like right here, it looks like the host is wearing a smartwatch that could probably use mobile pay and he could get 4.5% back on all of his spending with the US bank altitude reserve or this quarter, the discover it giving 5% on mobile pay up to 1500 this quarter, July, August, September, 2023. So if the Dave Ramsey show hosts are so smart, they have their money in order, they're responsible, then why don't they use credit cards? Oh, no, thanks. I'm just going to use cash and debit because the banks are bad or something. But we'll hear from them later about that. This family also believes that using a credit family member also believes that using a credit card is better than cash because of absolutely. the rewards different cards give you miles, cash back, et cetera. Yes, it's absolutely better than cash. You're using cash, you're getting back nothing, and you're actually paying the merchant fees. You know, they have to raise the prices in many cases to offset these transaction costs. So the people using cash and debit are paying for the merchant fees and getting nothing back. A lot of debit cards are giving 0% back in rewards. I would say most debit cards are giving 0% back in rewards. And with cash, you're definitely not getting anything back in rewards. With this member working in finance, they are more informative than I am when it comes to managing money. But after listening to you for so long, I <laughs> so the guy the guy works in finance. He's informed about managing money. He's saying, "Hey, use credit, get the rewards." Um, I would think be responsible, don't overspend. It's a family member, so they're not just going to suggest, "Oh, go into debt, whatever." So yes, be responsible, pay off the cards in full, get multiple cards. This is very easy. You take a good strategy and you win at the game as long as you can be responsible and organized it's not too much of an ask i think most people are able to do this but if you can't again don't get in it but dave ramsey is saying oh nobody should use credit at all um but i'm saying use credit responsibly if you can use credit responsibly play the game reap the rewards i can't wrap my head around what they're saying as the best option to build wealth what's the best way to have a discussion <laughs> with this family member that I can stop feeling pressured. Okay, well, I'm not sure who out there is saying that building credit is building wealth, that that's going to be the one thing that's going to get you there anyway, but it certainly can be part of it. I've chatted about this in previous Ramsey videos. This is a talking point from Ramsey and his fans. Oh, you're not gonna get rich on miles and points. Oh, well, I have my job and I make money on my job, so why bother taking on another job? Well, it doesn't have to be a tremendous commitment level to get involved in this miles and points hobby. I tell people just starting out, you get one card, shift your spend to the new card, get the sign up bonus. And then after that, let me know if you'd like to apply for more. Maybe you get one card every three months. Maybe you get one card every six months. Some people are averse to it. Oh, I don't wanna manage all these accounts. I say, well, maybe it's not that much of an effort managing all these accounts and look at the return that you're going to get back. I just logged into all my accounts, my checking accounts, my credit card accounts. I just manually pay things off. I check them every week so there's no fraud, that everything is up to date. I'm dealing with annual fees when they come up, whether canceling the card, downgrading, product changing, or keeping it. I'm just keeping on top of things. It's maybe taking about an hour a week. And some people even put their cards on auto pay, so they're not even necessarily logging in that often. They're trying to save some time that way. I'm not a big fan of auto pay, but that's a story for another day. So this callers talking about, okay, my family member who works in finance said, yes, use credit, get the rewards, don't use cash. And now the caller is saying, oh, Dave Ramsey said not to use credit. So what am I going to tell my family member? And oh, this guy is telling me this. And oh, it's, it's so bad that he's giving me good advice. <laughs> but the caller is experiencing what I think is cognitive dissonance here in that he regards his or she, Jerry, I don't know, but Jerry regards the family member as someone smart. But Dave Ramsey said, don't use credit. So how are we going to deal with this? Um, wh what are they going to say? Let's listen. Whoa. Uh, I love you. <laughs> and I don't agree with you. And we're not going to be able to be around each other 
if you don't shut up. The Dave Ramsey community is definitely not a cult. So if the family member says, hey, use credit, the response is going to be, I'm not going to be around you anymore if you talk about credit. <laughs> it's just really bad optics here. As many employees have left Dave Ramsey and said that it, it seems like a cult, that there are all these standards that you have to go by and you're going to get shunned if you have some um, bedroom fun outside of marriage, let's say for the YouTube censor and all these like lifestyle restrictions that Dave wants to put on these employees. Now, I'm not sure where these lawsuits are going or what's happening, but it's a lot of these employees making these claims that Dave Ramsey just has this whole lifestyle fix for everyone. They'll live a certain way. There's very low latitude in that with his uh, Christian living principles that are often talked about in these lawsuits and for the terms of employment. Uh, so Dave, why don't you want to listen to the family member about this? Can you just give arguments for why they shouldn't use credit? What are those arguments going to be? If you can use credit responsibly, why wouldn't you use credit responsibly and earn the rewards? Even if you're just going to use something like the U.S. Bank Altitude Reserve I mentioned to get 4.5% back on mobile pay, if you're using another card like the Blue Business Cash maybe, getting 2% cash back if you don't want to go much into the travel sphere, why would you not get 2% back on, on bonus spend and just use maybe those two cards or some other kind of setup? Personally, I advocate for getting a lot of cards after you get your first and you get more comfortable with this because it's very easy very, very good return for very, very low effort. People are saying, oh, that sounds like a lot of work. I often say, well, work sounds like a lot of work. So you're, how many hours are you going to have to work to afford that hotel stay, that vacation, that flight? Well, if you could put some minimal time in here and work on new cards, new applications, shift your spend around, I think that's a really good return on your time. But Dave Ramsey saying, no, just save up your money from your job, pay for your vacations in full, don't use the rewards, <laughs> just uh, leave all that on the table and just use cash and debit for everything instead of just traveling at next to no cost or free in some circumstances. So the host is laughing here. How's that? <laughs> or, or, <laughs> hey man, thank you so much. Um, I appreciate that. I, I, I'm just not into using credit cards and I know translation i'm not into earning rewards on the spend that i'm doing anyway i just don't want to do that because i don't like the banks like what what's the argument going to be here i'm not into it well this guy who works in finance is giving you a suggestion use credit earn rewards and oh no thanks i don't want those rewards i don't want to do that but there there's i've heard there's some great things but i'm just not into using them but i appreciate it yeah that's it yeah. not into you it. don't get a vote yeah you don't get a vote He's giving you advice. It's good advice, Dave. He's just a dupe. He happens to be in your family. but he... Now, I, I tried Googling what this was, a dupe, and I, I constantly came back with just references to, uh, let's say, Mary Jane for the YouTube censors here. I, I couldn't see anything else. Maybe dupe means a silly person, a goofy person. I'm not really sure, but I couldn't find that, so... If you want to say what a doob is in the comments, uh, feel free to enlighten me, but uh, I couldn't find much on, on Google to explain this. He's a doob. Yeah. And most people have doobs in their So it's like there's no argument against the credit cards in this clip anyway. He, he's made the arguments elsewhere, but he's just attacking the family member who made this suggestion. Use credit, get rewards. Oh, he's an idiot. Oh, don't listen to him. Don't talk to him if he wants to bring it up. We can't talk about that. So there's like no argument yet from Ramsey in this clip about why this is bad advice. And the co-host, oh, I heard there are good things, but I'm just not into it. Well, that, that sounds really dumb. You know, Ramsey likes calling people dumb. Well, it sounds really dumb. You guys, Ramsey, co-host here, you think you can manage your money fine. So why not use credit and earn the rewards? What's what's the problem? Families and you just, I have family members that vote the wrong way. I'm not going to discuss politics with them because they don't know how to vote. Okay, well, what's the argument, Dave? Will you give some arguments? Just like, oh, I'm not even going to have a conversation if people disagree with me. They're not hey, good at it. You know, I've heard many people say, oh, I don't know. Credit cards aren't worth the time. They aren't worth the effort. Or, oh, well, Dave Ramsey said that I won't be able to use my airline miles. And I could dispel these things that people say. And then they come around to it. And thanks, Justin. Thanks for saving me money on that trip. Oh, I didn't think it was this easy. Oh, I didn't think I'd be able to use those points. I've encouraged people to scale up in credit. You can listen to past podcast episodes. 
people thought, oh, well, it's going to take a long time. I'd have to spend a lot of money to earn that free flight. But I said, well, what about getting multiple cards and getting the welcome offers and using the benefits? You're going to earn points at a much higher rate. I've talked about creative ways to spend to earn more rewards. There are a lot of ways to win in this, unlike the Dave Ramsey framing of you're going to have to spend $50,000 to get 50 bucks or $500 or whatever. Like no, nobody in miles and points is seriously advocating putting $50,000 to spend on a 1% cashback card but dave ramsey is the king of mischaracterizations here i've said before it's like someone coming to the poker table and without even looking at their cards just going blind all in all the time losing their money and complaining about oh this game really sucks nobody could beat this game and this is really dave ramsey here oh well credit cards aren't worth the effort but he's not actually engaging with the arguments that are giving a better strategy He's not talking about sign-up bonuses. He's not saying, okay, well, just put the charges on and just pay off the balance in full. He's not saying, okay, if you can't be responsible with credit, don't use credit. He's just saying all credit bad. No one's responsible. You're always going to overspend. It's just it's just nonsense. Like how, how do people respect Dave Ramsey when he gives such bad advice and such bad mischaracterizations concerning credit? Let's continue. And let's 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 look at um his family member. Okay. Using credit cards and paying them off is a way you build credit. Absolutely. Using credit cards and paying them off is a way to build credit and you're getting the rewards, the benefits, and much more in the process. If you care about credit. <laughs> <laughs> so, so they're now saying, oh, why do you care about credit? What's so great about credit? Mm, well, if you're going to try to pay for a modest used vehicle and get a very low interest auto loan that might help if you're trying to look for an apartment that might help if you're trying to get a mortgage that might help if you want to check in at a hotel i think that's going to help too instead of putting down like this cash security deposit like why would you not want a good credit score and then you could add family members as authorized users and help them get a leg up uh, i speak with many people who add their children who are maybe 16 18 and give them a boost to their credit so that they can get primary accounts and that they can get a big jump start rather than having to establish it by themselves. This Dave Ramsey idea of just pay in full on cash for everything except for maybe the 15 year mortgage is just really unrealistic for many people that don't have that cash. Maybe they're in their early 20s. Maybe they had some difficulties. Maybe they've lost their jobs. Credit can be a good thing to fall back on. And it's going to help. It's going to make life easier. You have the purchase protections. You have the travel protections. You have many of the benefits, many ways to make and save money, many ways you can use credit to augment your business and get funding from credit. You're not going into debt if you're just paying everything off in full and being responsible with spending. Then that's a thing. And if you think that credit is going to cause you to build wealth, which is an interesting dichotomy because most millionaires don't believe that. <laughs> there's, there's the Dave Ramsey talking point. Well, we surveyed millionaires and no millionaire said that they got rich because of points and miles or because of credit. Well, what if they use credit on that journey, Dave? What if they're a business owner and they put their business expenses on credit cards and they were able to get the 2% cash back? They were able to make the day-to-day -day transactions a lot easier. They were able to use rewards and take flights. For instance, I go to multiple conferences per year. This is very good for networking. It's very good for finding new business opportunities in many cases. So instead of spending something like $700 for a round trip flight and the $150, $200 a night for a hotel, well, look, I just saved like $1,500, $2,000. And because of Hyatt status, I also got free breakfast. I didn't have to pay taxes or fees. I didn't have to pay resort fees on many of the hotels that I go to because of credit. I was able to use credit to my advantage rather than just paying cash in full. And if I could save something like $1,000 or $1,500 multiple times per year, well, that's kind of like making money, Dave, because otherwise I would have spent that money. I would, it would have been cash out of my pocket or out of my bank account or whatever. So why not use the rewards, save yourself money, and also make money? Yeah, you're not going to get rich on 2% cash back in most situations, but that's okay. Nobody's claiming that that's the goal. Many people are just doing this at low engagement. They're getting a few cards per year. They're getting the welcome offers. They're getting the benefits, and that saves them money. What a win that is. Just because you can't get rich out of it. Oh, you shouldn't play golf because you can't get rich. Millionaires said that golf is a waste of time because they never got rich playing golf. Like, What if you just like golf as a hobby? 
Many people like the miles and points stuff as a hobby. Is that okay? Oh, well, it's not worth it. You didn't get rich from it. Millionaires said they didn't get rich from credit cards, so it's a waste of your time. You know, it, it's just ridiculous. Correct. Now, little dude in the wealth management business believes that, but he's 26 and has an MBA. Oh, so he, he can't have an informed opinion about credit cards because he's only 26. So if you're in the audience and maybe you're in your 40s or 50s, if you can leave a, a comment here saying that you find credit to be a very good thing because you can responsibly manage it and rack up the rewards, let me know. Let Dave Ramsey know in the comment section on his video. Uh, I already gave him a dislike here, of course. That's, that's the Ramsey way, misrepresenting credit, saying it's not worth it, not giving you a good strategy. So he's correct. I'm just opting out of that system. Uh, can if you, you want to build credit, <laughs> yeah, but building credit is not a method to build wealth. No, it's <laughs> Building credit isn't a method to build wealth. All right, good, good luck, uh, people in your 20s looking for apartments. Ooh, the, the, <laughs> you want to move out of your, your parents' house, you want to get an apartment, but the landlord or the property manager, whoever wants to do a credit check. Oh, Dave Ramsey told me not to have any credit cards. I don't have any credit cards. I just pay for everything with cash and debit. Can I just get in? Is that okay? Can I get my apartment? Like, <laughs> come on. You want to you wanna rent a car? All right. Well, you know, we're going to give you cash when you get there. Uh, we don't operate. We, you need to put down a deposit um, beforehand. Um, yeah, credit can help you on that journey of building wealth. It can save you money. It can help you make money. It's not going to get you rich in many cases, but that's okay. Why does that have to be the goal for something to be worthwhile? It's a waste of, yeah, it's, it's a, a fun way Unless to... you're wanting to build wealth for the bank. <laughs> <laughs> so that's another Dave Ramsey, another Dave Ramsey talking point. Well, only the banks are going to get rich. You're not going to get rich from credit. The banks are only going to get rich. Well, it's actually something of mutual benefit in that the banks give you rewards for your spending and the bank will also make some money. But that's okay because we're both winning as long as we're being responsible with credit. I've gone on so many trips that I never would have paid for. When I redeemed Delta Sky Miles with a Delta deal, that pay it was 160,000 Delta Sky Miles in order to fly in business class to Italy. That flight would have cost $6,000. I'm never paying $6,000. I've gone on about four cruises so far that were comped thanks to credit, to loyalty programs and deals. I wouldn't have paid like $1,500, $2,000 for a cruise, but thanks to credit and loyalty programs, I was able to do that. Dave is saying, oh, just go on your one vacation, you know, pay it in full, pay, pay in full with cash, and then you're going to be back to your paycheck to paycheck lifestyle. But, you know, I would think this hobby would be far more attractive to people who weren't making a lot of money because then they're able to take the travel they otherwise wouldn't pay for, that they otherwise wouldn't take. It's really changed for me. I'm not rich. I didn't come from some rich household. I don't have any trust funds, but I'm able to use credit to my advantage and make major trips multiple times per year and not sweat it. I'm able to rack in the cash back. I'm able to get all these points, all these rewards where it's just really not a sweat to travel. I get the benefits for better travel. But with Dave Ramsey's program, you're not going to get any of that. You're just going to have to pay full price. But it's, it's a fun way to run around in a circle and make other people rich. Um, can you Ah, you're making other people rich by using credit. No, you're gaining rewards in the process. And even if the bank is making some money, you're not making them rich. If you're paying the balances in full, you're being responsible. The bank isn't getting rich out of you. In fact, there are many cards that give you a lot of benefits where I would imagine that they're not actually making money on certain customers because they're using all the benefits. They're not overspending. And they're just being responsible customers. They're saying, okay, these are these rewards. I'm going to be smart about it. I'm going to use these benefits. I'm going to get good value from this. And no, I'm not going to charge $10,000 that I couldn't afford and end up paying like 25% interest. It's not happening. That's not what I'm advising. Can you, can you get rewards from using credit cards? Yes. Yep. I have chosen in my house with my family <laughs> to opt out of a system because uh, my flights are not free. Well, actually, they are. If you shift your spend to a new card and you're getting a welcome offer that's offsetting the cost of the flight, it is free. Or at least there was some effort for you to do that. The minimal effort to shift your spend and just use a new card and maybe take five minutes for an application. It actually is free. Maybe there'll be some small expenses like food or surcharge or like $10 to book a flight. But... 
it's severely low cost at that point, and that's okay. It actually is free or close to it. The person who pays for my flights is a single mom who can't make her payments, who somebody said, if you use this little plastic card, it'll get you till next week. Okay, so another Dave Ramsey talking point here. Credit is evil. You shouldn't engage with credit because some people are paying interest. The banks are evil. They're exploiting people. Well, I'm not sure that anyone's really being exploited here. People know what they're getting into. They're of legal age. They can read terms. They can understand credit. All the information is out there. Now, you might object, oh, well, the interest rates are very high, 15 20%. Oh, that's a really high interest rate. Okay, so there could be a darker side of it. And I think there's a darker side of it with everything, like casinos. Some people are going in there. They've won lawsuits. And, oh, well, I just got all this money, so let's just put in a slot machine and have some fun. And a few days later, the random like senior citizen just loses all their money. The Pennsylvania lottery is another thing. I see people going into the store. They think they're going to win. They think they're lucky, whatever. But they're almost certainly going to be losers because the lottery has an extremely high house edge that the, the government is raking money in from the lottery. So people as adults can make informed decisions. If you use credit responsibly, then you're going to have a good outcome. It's like alcohol I've mentioned in previous videos. I'm not going to say all alcohol is bad because some people abuse alcohol or engage in drunk driving. It depends on how you use it. Even if the companies are pushing all of this and they're hoping to get teens to drink or they're whatever the case might be. Okay, look, yes, there could be a darker side of it, but should I opt out because some people make poor decisions or end up in bad spots? I don't think so. I'm going to take advantage of the reward programs. I'm going to get cash back. I'm going to get travel points. I'm going to get statuses. I'm going to make my life better. Oh, well, some, some people drank too much alcohol, Justin, so you shouldn't ever do it. Some people overate at the buffet, Justin, so you should never go to buffet. Oh, that Chinese restaurant is so exploitative. They're putting out those, oh, it's only $10 for all you can eat. But look at the obesity rates, Justin. So many people have gained so much weight. So you shouldn't play. That's a terrible place, that Chinese buffet. Like this, this is just a bad logic from Dave Ramsey. Like the casino is saying, hey, if you deposit $200 on our website and play it through one time, we're giving you $100. You know what I'm doing? I'm playing through that $200 one time. I'm getting the sign up bonus and I'm withdrawing my money. Oh, but Justin, some people get addicted to gambling. The casinos are evil. You shouldn't ever take advantage. Well, why wouldn't we want to take from the companies that we view as evil? We could participate and we cannot get burned in the process. This is a good strategy to kind of Robin Hood them. If you really think the banks are evil and you have this like black or white, all good, all bad attitude, I think it's really more in the middle that there could be some shady practices that go on. Yeah, the interest rates are high. Yeah, there are some practices that go on that aren't the best. We've seen some lawsuits against the banks for some practices, but I'm happy to play the game and win just because other people are making poor decisions or ending up in bad spots doesn't mean I shouldn't participate. You know, grocery stores will give a lot of doorbuster deals and say, oh, well, look, come in today and you could buy avocados for like 25 cents when they're like 75 cents elsewhere. And yeah, some people will go in and they'll get a lot more than that. And the grocery store makes money. Oh, the grocery store is so evil. They're tempting people in with deals. You should never, you should never go there because some people overspend at the grocery store. Like this is the level of the Dave Ramsey um, talking points here. She's buying my flights, and I refuse to let the people in the margins <laughs> pay for crap my family's doing. Yeah, so you're going to opt out, and then all of a sudden it's going to stop? I don't think it's going to stop anytime soon, because problem gambling is always going to be around. Poor financial decisions are always going to be around. It's just a thing. But should I just stop playing poker because some people lose money playing poker, and some people lose money in the casinos? No. I'm going to play. I'm going to continue making money. I'm going to continue having fun. I'm going to continue engaging with the credit card hobby, have fun, travel, earn the cash back, earn the rewards. Even if there are some people who are failing, I shouldn't just opt out. Like, what am I going to do? Just stay at home all day? Oh, well, you know, some I, I shouldn't ever have a Ford vehicle because some people spend too much money on vehicles and uh, they get in a bad financial situation. So I'm never going to own a car. I'm just going to walk everywhere. Oh, you know, some people come into this apartment complex and they can't afford rent. So I, I shouldn't live in an apartment either. Like, how, how far is it going to go? I'm, not, I'm opting out of that system. The number of millionaires in the largest study of millionaires <laughs> oh, here ever is. done. 
<laughs> that said they made their money on cashback rewards and airline miles is precisely zero. Yeah, so that, this is the Dave Ramsey talking point. Well, uh, the Dave Ramsey talking point. Millionaires said they didn't get rich so with credit cards, so don't use credit cards. That, that's just really silly. Oh, well, millionaires never got rich watching Netflix, so you shouldn't have any entertainment. Oh, millionaires didn't get rich uh, washing their hands and brushing their teeth in the morning, so therefore you shouldn't brush your teeth. <laughs> like It's just such a bad argument. If, if we can make some money and save money from credit cards, from miles and points, have fun, travel to places we otherwise wouldn't have gone to, then, then why not play the game? Why, why, why does it have to be, oh, it's only worthwhile to do if it makes us rich? You know, oh, Ramsey, your partnership with Yeti here, or the Yeti mug on the table, that didn't make you rich, so you shouldn't even have that mug on the desk. Like, come on. Zero, none. None of them. No millionaire <laughs> ever said, I became wealthy with airline miles. Well, that's interesting. Do you think people like Elon Musk or Bill Gates or Oprah or some of these other like high wealth individuals, do they just use cash and debit? Or maybe they use other people's money. I'm pretty sure, Dave, they use other people's money. And that's, <laughs> that's what's going on with credit. We're using the lines of credit the bank offers us to make purchases. We're paying it back and we're earning the rewards. Some people, like myself, are doing this for business purposes, where we get business credit cards, often with 0% APR offers. And the banks will say, hey, we'll give you a credit limit of like $12,000, $15,000, 15 months of zero interest. Just make the minimum payments and uh, have at it. So I'm more than happy to take $15,000 from the bank use that money to make money. I can use that money to invest. I can use that money into my business to make more money. I can do a lot of things with $15,000. The banks want to give me $50,000, $100,000. I'll take it, Dave. I'll take the loans. That's no problem. I can use that to make more money. So why wouldn't I do that? I'm pretty sure that if you asked millionaires, do you use credit cards? I'm pretty sure the answer is going to be yes, that they're putting their expenses on credit card, personal and business, and they're paying it off in full. Why would they not do that? Just because they didn't get rich with that one thing doesn't mean that it's a waste of time. And that's the, just dumber and crud. But it, it's, <laughs> yeah, again, again, in the personal tax, that's dumb, that's dumb. But there's like no argument about this. It's, oh, I'm, I'm going to set up this straw man that people are saying that credit cards are going to get you rich, but the millionaires didn't say that. So therefore, it's not worth it. It's, it's different. I mean, it's not different. It's people think they're, they're beating the system, but also <laughs> people think they're being a system. Actually, many people are beating the system you're getting the rewards you're paying it off the banks are hoping you overspend and pay interest but it doesn't have to be that way so it actually is beating the system but dave ramsey and his co-host are saying oh well you might say that you're frugal and that you don't overspend but even though you say that you really are overspending and you're really not frugal and even though you think you're winning and you haven't paid interest and we can look at all your statements oh well that's not true i think you spent too much like he he's just not <laughs> it's just not being reasonable here. You think that everybody in credit cards is just some whale and they're just going out buying all this useless stuff. And even if some people are living kind of a luxurious lifestyle or they're spending a little bit more like, OK, can they afford it? Is that part of their budget? I'm not advocating for that. I have the frugal cred. Dave, I can agree that Dave Ramsey has points that are worthwhile on the frugal life. But of course, you can get those points elsewhere and you can get the miles and points <laughs> using credit. But not with Dave Ramsey when Dave Ramsey's saying, oh, the banks are evil. Millionaires said they didn't get rich through credit, so it's not worth it. Like really, really bad arguments here from Dave. The way those points are presented as though the bank or the gas station is hooking you up. Yeah. These flights are helping you out because you're bros now. They're not. They're not. Well, actually, we kind of are. It's a mutually beneficial relationship. Now, maybe I'm not going to go out to dinner with the banker and talk to him about all these things and... Hey, I've been going through a hard time, Chase Banker. You know, could, could I talk to you a little bit about this? Like, I don't think those conversations are going to happen, but it's more of a business relationship or a financial relationship. Like, it doesn't have to be, oh, your pals and bros to benefit. There can be mutual benefit. As I said, we're earning rewards. The bank is making money from the merchant fees. Unfortunately, the bank is making money from the people paying high interest, but we can still win from the system. The banks are still approving. The banks are still putting out new offers. And it's a really great thing for the people who can responsibly manage credit. Now, some people, again, are not going to be winning. They're going to go into debt and they're going to pay interest. But I'm saying it doesn't have to be that way. You, listener, you can hopefully be responsible and win. I don't think it's too much of an ask. 
And if you can't be, then don't get involved. They're not your friend. They're not your friend. But here, you know, they're over. <laughs> you know, like I stopped keeping track of how much money I was making month to month, but it got to a point where I was very comfortable to quit my traditional job. I was making like $30 an hour. I walked away and said, you know what? I'm going to put more time into this credit stuff. I'm going to put more time into reselling. I'm going to put more time into finding all different ways to make money. I sell things on eBay. I do consulting. I play poker. Like there are a lot of different things I'm doing. And this wasn't just a whim. This wasn't just, oh, I'm making a decision overnight. It was doing a lot of research, putting the time into it, continuing to study, continuing to look into things, continuing to find new ways and being open minded. But the problem is that Dave Ramsey and his co-host are not open minded. They're repeating these talking points that are ridiculous. And you could see in the comments in the video, we'll get into those later, that people are saying things like, hey, this is a straw man. Hey, I'm responsible with credit. I'm paying everything off. So what's the problem with that? But Dave doesn't want to hear that. Oh, the banks are evil. You're not getting rich. It's not worth it. The answer to that, how do you deal with the pressure from a dude family member is simply this. Those convinced <laughs> against their will are of the same opinion still, my grandmother used to say. Wow. Okay, well, what's the argument, Dave? He's saying, hey, be responsible with credit, pay it off, earn the rewards. So why aren't you doing that? You're saying, oh, the banks are evil, but you're not you're not giving these arguments. The caller is saying, okay, my my family member was going to see, see on the screen if you're watching on YouTube, the pro debt family member. Like what what is pro debt about this? There there was no talk of saying pay interest. There was no talk of buy things you can't afford. Nothing. But Dave Ramsey is just making it seem like you're pro debt. It's this classic poisoning the well here that we're just going to assign this label to the family member who's actually trying to be helpful. And, you know, I have met some people who say like, oh, well, I just have a hard time organizing all these accounts. And I say, OK, try it. Why don't you just get one more card? Why don't you just get a second card and see? And, you know, maybe people just aren't going to play ball. And that's too bad because I think many people can really benefit from this. But am I pro debt because I'm giving them this advice? Am I leading them down a bad path? Am I like the devil incarnate here? Like, all right, well, Justin, uh, I'm not willing to sign up for a card at this time, but maybe in the future or maybe they just say, all right, well, I just don't want to do it. You know, unfortunately, I think some people are skeptical. They're not motivated. They say they don't find the time. They don't have the time, whatever it is. Um, I, I think it's a very easy argument to get deeper into the hobby, to get more cards, to sign ups, sign up and get more bonuses, more benefits. I think it's a no brainer, especially for people making low income that you're working, you're making maybe like $15 an hour, $10 an hour. Why would you not take advantage of this? How much time are you going to have to put in to afford the travel and pay for it out of pocket versus the small amount of time you're going to have to put in in miles and points to get new cards, to get welcome bonuses, to use benefits. I think it's a really worthwhile proposition. So for the rest of this video, Dave Ramsey doesn't talk too much about this. It's more of like, well, if he's uh, if I can't convince people they're they're boneheaded, then I'm just not going to talk to them. It's a waste of time. So let's scroll down to the comments here. The truth about debt. <laughs> uh, let's scroll down um, here. I got jammed up with credit card debt one time in my life. I learned my lesson and got away from it and kept everything I had. The borrower, a borrower is the slave to the lender is totally true. Doesn't matter what you owe, they become your master. Well, not necessarily. If you're not getting jammed up with credit and debt, then you'll be all right. So I guess this person couldn't couldn't control the spending, but it, does that mean you're slavish? I, I guess it's slavish if you can't get things in order. But Dave Ramsey is almost never talking about managing credit responsibly. He is just saying, don't use it at all. He's not giving any tips for using credit better. He's just saying, don't use it at all. So unfortunately, this Dave Ramsey fan Morgan is just going to miss out on lots of rewards and benefits because they can't figure it out. They can't be more financially disciplined. I don't know what's going on here, but I'm not going to go with uh, Ramsey's plan and get 0% back using cash and debit. Uh, here, this other commenter, Dylan, my only complaint is the straw man arguments. I don't think anyone thinks that rewards from credit cards is how you build wealth, but having good credit can make life a lot easier. Trying to find even a good apartment to rent without good credit is challenging. So why not just build your credit anyway to make your life easier? Yeah, I'm a landlord. The only time I let someone rent with a low credit score, they stop paying rent on the third month. So maybe credit is a good indicator sometimes. Credit card debt equals bad. Getting a credit card and paying it off every month 
equals not building wealth, but also not doing anything wrong. Well, you'll use credit on the path to building wealth and you'll earn some money, you'll save money, and that's the promise. But it doesn't have to be either rich or not. And if it's not rich, then it's not worth it. So some good points here from Dylan. Um, am I really the grumpy says the only good credit is no credit. <laughs> like what? Um, no credit is exactly no credit. Stop what you're smoking. I guess it's like the dupe stuff. I don't know. But yeah, why not build credit if you could do so responsibly and earn the rewards? Uh, Chucky here says they've always backed up that fact with manual underwriting. Basically proving that not only do you have the finances, but you have a long-standing history of paying your bills on time consistently where your household income is. Obviously, that is about getting mortgage without credit, similar how you should approach your low credit score tenants eligibility instead of just giving them a chance. So I don't know if there's someone that just comes up to me, I'm a landlord and they say like, hey, I have 775 credit. I pay my cards on time. Like this is a good indicator of financial responsibility versus someone who coming in with like 600, 500 scores and like, who, who are you going to take? Uh, there's, there's a good reason that landlords want to do credit checks rather than manual underwriting. It's like, okay, well, I guess submit like a few months of pay stubs to the landlord, but I'm definitely going to take the person with solid credit over any of that if I were a landlord, assuming I'm not breaking the law, but I'm not a landlord. So I guess I don't have to worry about that. Uh, going down here. Uh, don't waste your time in debating, just live your life and follow a plan that works for you. Well, that's, I, I don't know about that because maybe other people have ideas that are better than Dave Ramsey's ideas of just not using credit, using debit only. Uh, so this is like the closed mindedness. Um, do what works for you. Well, there's some merit in that, but what if there's a better plan? Not just what works, you know, what works. A lot of people will get lazy or they don't want to try new things. Oh, well, you know, I'm not too happy at my cashiering job, but I'm just going to keep doing it for the rest of my life because it works. You know, it's getting me by. Uh, I've, I've heard this from some people and it's it's really sad. Um, the comments are Asan. Dave's main audience is people with debt problems. So he pushes people away from problematic situations such as credit card usage. If debt isn't your problem, then the money guys is a much better option for financial advice. So it's an interesting comment here. I've heard that response from some Dave Ramsey fans. Oh, Justin, you're not the audience. He's just speaking to different people, not you. But it's still Dave Ramsey being inaccurate. It's still Dave Ramsey misrepresenting credit, no matter who the audience is. Dave Ramsey is so extreme, and he's not saying that credit can have a good side. He's just painting credit in the banks as all bad. Uh, another commenter here, Cycle Cruza. I've been 100% debt-free since 2007, and I'm 100% against all debt. But I do use credit cards instead of cash, which give me 5% back on my purchases, but I never carry a balance. I pay off the credit card balance 100% each month. Not only can you make a little money with a credit card, you're better protected against fraud and it can give some other benefits like insurance, etc. You're getting 30 days to pay the balance. Meanwhile, your money is earning interest in the bank. Win-win. Yeah, that's another good point. And I've actually opened a Juno checking account that's giving 5% APY. So I'm not paying things way in advance when I can just let the money build up and earn money. Maybe you can park money in an account that says, hey, open a checking account, deposit maybe $4,000, $5,000, and you can get a bonus for doing it. Some people will do the larger ones, maybe like $20,000 to get a $500, $600 bonus, just parking the money in there for 90 days. I've even opened a savings account with Discover, and all I had to do was the initial transfer and the money posted, and then I was able to take it out just a few days later. So that was very easy money, thanks to credit, thanks to 0% APR credit cards. I'm converting credit to cash in many different ways. And I'm making more money on my path to wealth. But you know what? I'm not only relying on credit to get there. I'm not only relying on credit for retirement. I'm also investing. I'm also engaging in other activities, business activities, as I mentioned, reselling. I'm investing. I'm doing a lot of different things. Uh, commenter Bob, if you pay your credit card off every single month and literally never pay interest yet reap all the cashback rewards, how is that a bad strategy? Dave isn't right about everything. Correct. So we get replies here. Uh, totally agree. Dave doesn't hear the other side. He's so closed minded, although some things Dave said are valid. Um, Jody says here, I've done that for many years. I've gotten a new dishwasher with my points. I'm not sure what that's about. I wouldn't recommend using points to buy a dishwasher because usually the rate of return on that is very, very low. Don't get me wrong. I love points. However, I got laxed with what we were spending on. I've gotten control again. So yeah, part of this is just being responsible. But you know what? I think people are going to have these problems with cash 
and debit anyway. Like people are still going to be irresponsible with cash and debit. No matter what the instrument is, people are going to be irresponsible. Now, Dave would say, oh, well, it's plastic. And people just say, oh, I can worry about it later. Okay, yeah, there's some merit to that. But if you're responsible, it's not going to be a problem. So that's Dave Ramsey and discussing wealth with pro-debt family member. <laughs> uh, an interesting video here. It's a lot of the same Dave Ramsey talking points. The banks are bad and evil. They're just taking advantage of you. You shouldn't ever do it. You should just cancel all your credit cards and just use cash and debit for everything, getting no rewards, paying full price for travel. It's a very bad plan from Dave Ramsey. Instead, if you're responsible with finances, if you're responsible with money and credit, there's a world of rewards to earn. You can listen to many of my other podcast episodes here at the Hurdy Gurdy Travel Podcast and learn much more about how to do this from other people that recently got into the hobby, previous episodes with guests Tammy and Heidi and many people who have been in the hobby for years who are continuing to win. Thanks for listening and stay tuned for future episodes. Visit hurdygurdytravel.com to contact me, find me on social media, read select episode transcripts, and schedule a free consultation. Support the show through Subscribestar, referral links, and buying from my eBay store. Find the show on many podcast platforms and YouTube where you can find bonus videos. Supporting me on Subscribestar will give you special perks including a custom podcast episode, questions answered by upcoming guests, and monthly private one-on-one -on -one conversations delving into more advanced topics I don't openly discuss at length in podcast episodes. Visit meetup.com slash Philly Miles and Points to learn about Greater Philadelphia Travel, Credit Miles and Points meetups I host in Willow Grove, Pennsylvania. I hope to see you in person at a future event. Find a link in the show notes. I'll be speaking at the upcoming conference ZorkFest, Z-O-R-K-F-E-S-T, which will include social events and sessions educating about miles, points, and gambling. Find more information at zorkfest.com. Thanks so much for listening. Have a great day.